Technology can be disruptive because it can forever change the way people operate in their daily lives. What if technology could also disrupt language bias and privilege? What if access to certain language technologies could help challenge language hierarchies and give endangered languages a fighting chance of survival? With over 3,000 languages in danger of being lost before 2100, we know there is a need to act quickly. Living Dictionaries are comprehensive, free, online technological tools integrating audio, images, and other multimedia that can assist language communities, providing a simple way to create high-quality multilingual documentation records. The Living Dictionaries platform is a progressive web application functioning within any internet browser on any computer or mobile device, Android or iOS. If needed, Living Dictionaries can be created, managed, and edited using only smartphones or tablets, which can function as complete workstations for recording and entering linguistic data and other multimedia. Living Dictionaries can be public or private and may include written entries with translations and example sentences in multiple languages and scripts, audiovisual files, parts of speech and semantic domains, morphosyntactic linguistic analysis, and can be tagged with other metadata. At Living Tongues Institute for Endangered Languages, we are proud to offer free online training for citizen linguists creating living dictionaries on our platform. The platform is free because for almost all minority language communities, the costs related to producing high-quality linguistic materials can be insurmountable. A moral imperative of the 21st century is the decolonization and democratization of linguistic resources. Online dictionaries should reflect the user communities, tailored to suit their needs as well as curated by citizen linguists. Community resources have greater uptake and engagement by communities if they take a primary role in developing them. The old dictionary-making paradigm was dependent on print restrictions, content limits, page layouts, alphabetization, and other issues related to cost and format. Today, these types of bottom-line concerns and restrictions are largely irrelevant, and powerful search functionality and the relatively low cost of database storage has obviated many challenges of the past. We now benefit from the possibility of integrating audiovisual multimedia, the ability to accommodate sign as well as oral languages, and perhaps most importantly, the capacity to address the vast gap in digital resource availability that disproportionately impacts minority communities worldwide. A free multimedia online dictionary platform such as Living Dictionaries accommodates the needs of 21st century users by using the latest technologies to produce tools that, in the long run, can become encyclopedic in nature. As activists in the field of endangered language documentation globally, we know that colonization has caused thousands of language communities to become disenfranchised. Most states are not investing in resources needed to support minority languages. Through the Living Dictionaries platform, Living Tongues Institute has approached solutions to the massive global language extinction crisis by attempting to obviate institutionalized barriers that prevent equal status and equitable treatment of all forms of linguistic communication. Training local people to conduct language documentation and revitalization work and build dictionaries for their own communities is a core long-term aspect of our approach. As pointed out by such scholars as Alexander 2008, Batibo 2009, Ajukum 2018, and Princelow 2019, this is a core aspect of the decolonization of linguistics in the African context. Africa is rightly celebrated for its linguistic diversity, but the vast majority of languages have yet to cross the digital divide. Many countries in Africa chose to promote colonial languages as official state languages, especially English, French, and Portuguese, and we include Arabic as a colonial language of Africa as well. Typically, one ethnic, or at least social capital majority language, has come to serve as a national language in a large number of African countries, such as Botswana, described by Batibo 2002, Ethiopia, Zahorik and Tashome 2009, or Warku 2018, and Senegal, McLaughlin 2008. If a multilingual policy is quasi-inclusive on paper, typically a handful and maximally up to a dozen regionally dominant languages of wider communication are accommodated to varying degrees but usually with the ultimate goal of transition to larger languages in the local language hierarchies, seen in among other areas by the narrowing of choices for the media of instruction as children advance through levels of schooling, where former colonial languages typically dominate higher levels and STEM disciplines, regardless of how many languages serve as media of instruction for entry-level education. Combined with prof processes of elite closure and the state control of financial resources for educational, legal, and media practices, the majority of African languages remain outside of the economic mainstream, and indeed their continued exclusion and disenfranchisement are typically justified by financial concerns. The Living Dictionaries platform obviates this institutionalized roadblock by being free of, for all to use. 
In addition, in some areas of Africa, small-scale multilingualism, such as described by Lupka and Storch, 2013, Lupka, 2015, 2016, draws into question the concept of mother tongue, native languages, or ancestral code. Uh, for this, we refer to Childs et al., 2014, to Carlo et al., a couple of papers, and Nassenstein and Hollington, 2016, Wolf, 2017. The reality of small-scale multilingualism makes the assimilationist and at best bilingual practices of education in many African nations ill-suited to local instantiations of language ideologies, identi identities, and practices, and necessitates new models of multilingual accommodation. Living dictionaries provide an innovative way to accommodate multiple languages simultaneously. A digital dictionary may be created for any variety, whether it is oral or signed, recognized as a separate distinct language or just a dialect, patois, creole, pidgin, urban youth language, or any other lectal designation. Ideologies of what is a proper linguistic variety to be used are not relevant to the living dictionaries. Living dictionaries can also accommodate as many dialects or variants as desired by the community members creating the tool. Decisions guiding what dialects are represented or not within a living dictionary are community-driven. Grassroots efforts are indeed at the core of this work, and communities deserve to be able to represent and access their languages and dialects online in the ways that work best for speakers, learners, and stakeholders themselves. Underrepresented languages need online resources to thrive in the digital era, because people need to be able to easily store, reference, and share content in their languages. We advocate for an inclusive citizen science approach to digital lexicography. The reality of the finite and limitedly available financial and human resources that exist for trained linguists and the vast number of languages in need necessitated a solution that could accommodate linguists and language activists alike. This platform provides an easy-to-use framework for systematically storing and sharing dictionary data in thousands of endangered languages, thus increasing their viability for survival in the long term. We have created the Living Dictionaries platform with activists in mind, optimizing it for global remote collaboration, ease of use, and accessibility on mobile devices and we integrate community user feedback into the design and programming of the tool. Living Tongues Institute stands at the intersection of linguistics and activism, with the capacity to launch technological solutions to help aspiring language activists and scholars alike. Our team has adopted a vertically integrative approach to language documentation, in which local language consultants learn transferable digital and scientific research skills to eventually become research assistants, colleagues, and ambassadors for their languages. By facilitating in-person and online workshops during which we train local indigenous language activists to record and edit words and phrases in their native languages, we have developed a strong strategy that prioritizes documentation as well as professional empowerment. The materials and resources we create in collaboration with citizen linguists will become the driving force that help descendants revitalize their languages in the future. Anna will now demonstrate the nuts and bolts of this particular tool. Now I'll walk you through the process of creating a new living dictionary. Living dictionaries are fully creatable, manageable, and editable using mobile technology alone. Smartphones can function as complete workstations for entering multimedia into the dictionaries. We made the setup process user-friendly and fast so that activists can easily start their projects with as few bottlenecks as possible and no institutional red tape. Once a user registers for an account on the platform, they can create a new living dictionary right away and become the manager of that dictionary. Here I'll show you the information required to create a new living dictionary for Babanki, a grassfield Bantu language spoken by under 40,000 people in Cameroon. The creation process can take as little as a few moments or longer if the person needs to search online for metadata relevant to the dictionary. Among the information requested is the name of the language, a string of data which in turn automatically populates the ending of the URL of the new dictionary. The name can be modified later by the manager at any time in the settings section of the living dictionary. The URL, however, cannot be changed after it's established because it becomes hard-coded into the website. Next, the dictionary manager is prompted to add glossing languages to the project. Since Babanki is spoken in Cameroon, English and French will be the glossing languages included here. This is done by choosing from a list of over 300 useful glossing languages that are worldwide in scope. We curated this list based on the dominant regional languages that users might need for their glosses, and will continue to expand this list to include local languages in small-scale multilingual situations in Africa. 
Content in different glossing languages is searchable within the living dictionaries as well. Then geocoordinates are requested. The manager may manually enter latitude and longitude coordinates or search on our digital map using an integrated map box plugin to drop a pin in the general area or perhaps the exact village where the language is spoken. This geolocation step is optional and this data may be amended later on by the platform administrators if you need help. We are currently working on the ability to drop multi geopins as well as create polygons to better represent regions where languages are spoken, since many users have requested such options. User feedback and suggestions help drive our design process, and we really value the input from dictionary managers on the platform. After that, dictionary managers can fill out the alternate name section for the language by typing them in one by one and hitting enter to lock them in. Many languages are known by multiple names in the linguistic literature and may also have various endonyms. We designed this naming aspect to be inclusive to all the possible naming conventions of the language, so there is no limit to how many alternate names one can list here. They may also be typed in any script that is Unicode compliant. All of the alternate names will be used to tag the dictionary, which helps improve the search engine optimization, SEO, of each living dictionary on the internet so that other people can find it. The final steps in creating a living dictionary include typing in the ISO 639-3 code and the glotto code associated with this language. This also helps with SEO in case people are searching for linguistic resources by those codes. Adding these codes is optional because people might not know these codes or be aware that they even exist for their languages and some underrepresented languages do not yet have these codes. Lastly, the dictionary manager must decide whether the living dictionary will be visible to the public or not by checkmarking a box indicating that they have community consent to put representations of this language online. The default setting for new dictionaries is not visible to the public, which we consider to be a private mode. We design it this way for various reasons, we want to be sure that the language community has given their consent for the language being represented online. We also want to give people the option of building their resources privately at their own pace before letting the rest of the world know that the living dictionary exists. It's important to note that a private living dictionary is not password protected. It's merely inaccessible for anyone who does not have the link. If made visible, the, ling the Living Dictionary will be available for browsing on our public list of dictionaries on the platform's homepage and will also be displayed on our map if the geocoordinates are provided at the time of setup. The Visible to the Public option may be activated at any time using the Settings tab on the left sidebar. At any time, whether the dictionary is set to private or public, a user may copy-paste the URL of the dictionary itself and share it with their friends, colleagues, and relatives. Anyone who has been given the link can then view and browse it without having to type in a password or register for an account on the platform. Viewers cannot modify the Living Dictionary itself unless they are registered as a collaborator or a manager of the project. Each dictionary and each entry within a dictionary is shareable as a unique URL which can be easily shared on social media or hyperlinked on other websites. All of these details can be found in our comprehensive Frequently Asked Questions page, FAQ, which can be easily accessed through the link on the top menu bar of the platform. It's a Google document that we update on a weekly basis with new information and instructions about the platform's use, as well as news of upcoming Zoom webinars. Dictionary managers and collaborators may also send us a direct message using the Contact Us button on the top menu bar. At any time, dictionary managers may also consult the Terms and Conditions page to learn about intellectual property rights and ownership of their data. It's important to us that the intellectual property rights related to linguistic and cultural content remain in the hands of the native speakers and the dictionary creators who work together to build the dictionaries on the platform. In terms of adding entries and multimedia to a living dictionary, this can be done on the platform by adding individual text entries and recording audio directly onto the platform. Here are the types of information that can be provided for each entry in a living dictionary. Lexeme, 
which is headword. Phonetic transcription, representations in different orthographies, scripts, glossing into different languages, parts of speech, semantic domains, morphology, interlinearization, dialect name, sample sentences, source, and other kinds of data. If a team is working on a living dictionary and they realize they need more glossing languages than previously thought, they can contact us through the contact form. It's also important to note that monolingual dictionaries can be made. If the glossing language and the entry language are the same, and if the interface is translated into the language of the dictionary itself, then it's possible for the entire living dictionary to be in one language. If the dictionary manager already has a large amount of text data in CSV, PDF, or doc file formats, they may request a batch import spreadsheet template from our team by using the batch import request form found on our FAQ page. The process of importing existing batch data is continually being improved by our team. We engage the dictionary managers in a conversation about what kind of data they have, what format it is in, what scripts are being used in their data, what glossing languages they need, and how they want their project to be represented online. Then we import the data into the back end of the platform and use it to populate a new living dictionary. We can import data from Flex, Toolbox, Lexic Pro, and other formats. This is useful for scholars who already have a digital dictionary content and want to record audio to go along with it. As Lou and Shriver aptly commented, modern dictionaries in the form of apps or online services are better seen as collections of structured data and code rather than hardware. This observation certainly applies to the Living Dictionaries platform, which is programmed using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React.js with Svelte integration, and uses Google Firebase on the back end as a cloud-hosted database. The language data, audio recordings, and images are stored in the cloud. The code is currently stored in a GitHub repository with plans to make it open source in the future. The Living Dictionaries platform is a progressive web application, PWA, that functions as a website in any de desktop browser and behaves like a mobile app on smartphones and on tablets. PWAs are known to be secure, reliable, and fast. Our platform does not require the user to download or install any software from the internet. Instead, Living Dictionaries cache data on the user's device itself. Once a living dictionary has been created online, text entries can be accessed and modified offline if needed. This is because service workers enable the platform to synchronize with the server and load text data instantly, regardless of the network state. So text entries can be edited offline and changes will be automatically uploaded to the cloud when the user is back online. Plans are underway to eventually make multimedia editing accessible offline in the future. We partnered with tech company Algolia to improve the platform's search engine capability on mobile and on desktop. The Algolia search integration allows users to search a living dictionary very efficiently, as well as use new filters that can search by categories, such as part of speech, semantic domain, speaker name, or the presence of other kinds of tags. One can also use the powerful search bar located in the center right above the language data to locate entries by lexeme, morpheme, part of speech, semantic domain, or other parameters. Search results are displayed alphabetically. It's important to note that users can easily search for any morphemes that are embedded inside lexemes. This is very important for polysynthetic languages such as Sora, spoken in India, where users may want to yield search results related to morphemes inside words, and alphabetical considerations are therefore inconvenient. A dictionary user can click on the top right language button to toggle between interface languages to display the website in available languages. The Living Dictionary website interface is currently available in English, Spanish, French, Portuguese, Hebrew, Russian, and Kiswahili. Languages such as Modern Standard Arabic, Bahasa Indonesia, Malay, Filipino, Zulu, Shona, Hindi, Assamese, Oriya, and Bengali will be available on the interface in 2021. All functionality and features, including extensive drop-down menus for semantic domains and parts of speech, are represented in the various interface languages. 
The website remembers the user's choice of language interface preference and automatically displays the website in this language upon the user's return. At any point in navigating the web platform, the user may toggle between interface languages without having to leave the browser at all. A living dictionary can also display up to five writing systems for an entry, which is useful for dictionaries where multiple competing scripts are used to represent a language. Living dictionaries may be adjusted depending on what data the user wants to see. They may be viewed through three different types of visualization, list view, table view, and gallery view. Those settings are available near the top right hand corner of the entries page. Each different setting provides the user with different ways of visualizing and navigating the data inside the dictionary. List view displays the data in a traditional dictionary list. Table view shows a spreadsheet of data and gallery view only pulls in entries with accompanying images. The Living Dictionaries platform is engineered to have multiple collaborators logged into the system and editing a dictionary project at the same time in real time. Remote collaboration is possible and encouraged on the platform. There are close to 300 activists working on over 200 different living dictionaries on the platform and more joining every week. A dictionary manager may invite other collaborators to join the dictionary directly through the platform itself by using the invite manager or invite contributor feature. Dictionary managers can add, edit, or delete content whereas contributors can add and edit, but cannot delete any content. In terms of future plans, our upcoming digital features include, in the short term, video integration, an IPA chart picker, export functions, links to ecological databases, and regular training workshops. In the long term, we plan to work on speed optimization, offline mode functionality, audio analysis, expanded storage, prompts integration, automated features such as an image bank, and advanced training for linguists who wish to create monolingual dictionaries. In summary, Living Tongues Institute has developed a practical web-based software found at livingdictionaries.app that can help people build a dictionary from the ground up. Moving forward over the next few decades, our team will continue to build and refine this digital framework for global application and deploy the platform at scale to serve all the world's endangered languages. This project can help mitigate the global language extinction crisis by opening the door to linguistic documentation for all, expanding access to cultural equity and self-determination. As an online platform that presently houses dictionaries for over 200 languages, it utilizes the safety and flexibility of remote collaboration between dictionary managers. We are committed to maintaining this platform for decades to come so that the work of language activists may live on and benefit community stakeholders, descendants, educators, and scholars.